Good afternoon, folks. Uh, my name is Eric Lopez. This is the OpenStack Astara, a hands-on installation and configuration workshop. Um, I have two partners, Phil Hopkins and Shashank Hedi. Um, they'll be helping around. You go through the labs. There's a handout that has all the access information that you'll be accessing a remote lab. Um, so boot up your computers, get PuTTY or SSH, depending on what type of platform and we'll log into those systems. I'm from, I'm a solution architect at Aconda. We are the main supporters for Project Astara. It's a community project. We were just open, uh, just got in part of the op uh, big tent for OpenStack uh, last summit. Uh, Phil Hopkins is with Rackspace, and Shawshank, he, he's from Arista. So we've all worked in this environment. Um, we kind of believe in this solution. This is a great solution if you're looking at possible ways how to, to simplify and extend Neutron. So uh, just a quick question. How many people actually know about the OpenStack Astara project prior to this? <clears throat> have people installed, have their own compute clusters, and have they used any other type of uh, SDN solution or other than the reference architecture? Anybody done NSX, Contrail, <laughs> ODL? Yeah. So this is, a, I think, is a more simplistic viewpoint. It's a lot more lightweight than those other solutions. So hopefully you'll get a lot of out of this uh, particular environment. So I mentioned the, who we are. So Phil Hopkins is a principal engineer at Rackspace. And, Shawshank is a software engineer at Arista. So if you have any questions, raise your hand. They'll help you out during the lab. <clears throat> um, Logistic-wise, um, the slide decks are available. Uh, it's a PDF document. Um, if you can right now, actually download the slide deck if you want to go over it with me. Um, there's also the tutorial. It's a readme file um, on GitHub. So these you can actually help cut, cut and paste some of the commands that we'll be doing to install the labs. And then the, the hands-on lab, you, we distributed a, a, fly, uh, a flyer that has all the access information to how to get into the environment. So this is going to be our high-level agenda for today. Um, we have a lot to cover. Um, I'll do a high-level architectural viewpoint of, uh, of Astara. And then we'll go over the tutorial, which is going to be install and configure Astara. And then what are the next steps? Um, what we can do in the future for additional adding additional information to the tutorial, how to actually contribute to this project. It's all open source. Um, and we're part of the three opens, so that's kind of key. And then at the very end, we'll have some Q&A session um, if you have any questions about the overall architecture or questions about the tutorial and such. So, so our core principles. Um, from the get-go, we wanted to simplify how Neutron is run, right? Uh, the reference architecture has all these agents that are running on your in different environments. Want to be actually compatible with Neutron. So we didn't want to replace Neutron or replace the whole networking stack that some of these SDN solutions do. And we're actually a fully open development environment. So the Apache 2 license, you can modify the code, put it back up on GitHub, keep it. So, <clears throat> so one of the key aspects about this platform is our orchestration platform. Like I said, we extend and simplify the environment. So the, our orchestrator is actually the control plane orchestrator, right? It's logically centralized. What, that, what we mean by that is actually we actually can create a cluster of the orchestrator to actually provide um, the control plane high availability situation. It's a pluggable driver model, so as new services or how you want to ex extend it, we have a driver model. You can plug in additional features that you want. Um, it, from the get-go, this is a Python process. Um, we use threads, it's, so it's multi-process as well as multi-threaded. So, and it utilizes the standard OpenStack APIs. We don't create additional APIs, interfaces with Nova, interfaces with Neutron, and interfaces with Glance. Right? So we're keeping 
how any cross project, project actually interacts with each other. We do it by the API in, interfaces. So. so if you look at it from a kind of a graphical viewpoint of this, is we have the star management and orchestration platform, Neutron and Nova. You have your physical L2 network. It doesn't matter what model that you use to plug in the VMs into your physical infrastructure. We can work with OVS. We can work with Linux Bridge or any other proprietary SDN solution that provides L2 connectivity for the instances to your physical environment. And that's one of the key things is part of this simplicity. It doesn't matter what L2. Um, we actually leverage, I think, le uh, Linux Bridge a lot easier than any other solution. And so it makes it easier for you to operate in the long run. If you're re running an organization, you have to deal with learning OVS if you're going to be using some type of OVS platform or platforms that utilize OVS, right? OVS is not as easy as what we've been used to with Linux Bridge and the Linux environment as server admins. Or if you're using a proprietary solution, right, you have to learn a whole new tool set as well. So this is a, not a black box, this is a white box, so everyone can learn and know what's going on in the environment. So since we're abstract, agnostic to the, the, what overlay of support that we want, and we utilize the OpenStack APIs, and then all the other features that we want to provide are, is done through these service VMs that we spin up in the environment. And that's kind of the key aspect of this. Is the service VMs are, part, are the data plane element in your environment. The control plane, we don't modify the control plane, unlike some other solutions. So your basic Neutron reference architecture, right? You have your Neutron service that talks to the message queue or your message bus, which talk to the, all these different agents in your environment. So you have the L2 agent, L, L3 agent, DHCP event, and other advanced services that you want to do, VPN, load balancer, and such. So in terms of the data path, east-west traffic between L2 is through the network node that gets created into the reference architecture, right? North-south traffic is going through that network node as well. As, and then any other metadata, DHCP, goes are located on the network node. So now you have to monitor capacity plan for this particular device. Now you have to cluster to this particular node. So you have to figure out how to monitor and maintain. For Neutron utilizing Astara, we do away with all these additional agents, right? We supplement this by having a service appliance that provide these additional advanced services for Neutron. So the orchestrator talks to the Neutron server, listens over the RPC calls and the different aspects from the message queue. And then whenever it requests some type of advanced feature, we intercept that and provision the service VM for those particular services. So the only thing that's running is your L2 agents. So if you look at that, you, now you don't have any network node, right? You simplify your, you've automatically simplified your architecture. And now you can increase your throughput, your high availability is now the service VM is utilizing your compute infrastructure, right? If you need more performance, you add more capacity to your compute infrastructure, which gives you more capacity for your instances for your customers as well. East-West traffic between L2 domains is through the uh, uh, Star Service Appliance. North-South traffic is always through the Service Appliance. That's where the routing is going to be occurring at. Um, the Service Appliance model is a per-project resource. So each tenant will have their own service VMs. So one service VM will would not necessarily affect a whole range of different tenants. Unlike if you lost a network node, you're going to be losing or get disrupted for your whole environment or whatever portion of that environment. And our service appliance is a white box VM. So it has all the standard open Linux tools that are currently available. It can be expanded for as you want to add more features in an environment. And if you notice, <coughs> the service appliance will be located at different hypervisors at different points in your environment. So, so we're also designed for scale, so hundreds of compute nodes, 
thousands of projects, tens of thousands of, of NICs. All right, we actually have built in sort of the cluster control plane. So if you don't necessarily, when the orchestrator goes down, we actually have a cluster of orchestrators that are working and providing the resources. And it's all multi-threaded, multi-processed. And then the neutron resources are done as HA pair as well. So, so all the advanced services will know what to deal with when a particular v service appliance VM dies, or maybe that compute node dies, it'll actually re-spin up. The orchestrator will know that that particular node is down, that particular service VM is, is down because of the health checks are not seen, and spin up a new in instance of that particular uh, service appliance and reprogram it. So any quick questions about so overall architecture of Astara? Mm -hmm. like per, tenant per, per tenant resource. So, it, so if you spin up a load balancer, it's gonna, you can technically you can spin up a different uh, ser uh, service appliance VM for that particular feature, right? Or, in in some cases, if you wanted to have multiple routers for a particular tenant, there'll be a service VM for each of those router instances. Go ahead. Um. So if that's for the tenant, so I guess that sits underneath the tenant, the actual tenant itself can't see that. So where would Correct. that sit in Horizon? So it's under the, kind of under the cloud kind Correct. of thing? It, it, that, well, when you go through the labs, we'll, at the very end, we'll show you where that tenant lives. It actually lives in the service tenant. So the actual tenant that's spun up that router won't see that instance in their particular viewpoint. So any other quick questions? This is just controlling the resources that we're spinning up for the, for the environment. The, the data plane uh, uh, is the, for the control plane orchestration. Can, it, can we also control the data plane aspect of it? So that's the general gist of the question. Um, we don't modify the data plane. We're, since we're L2 agnostic, the only way we kind of modify the control plane is these service appliances get plugged in in the appropriate way. An environment, right? So, we're not programming flows on the V switches or or redirecting traffic, other than how typical L2 through L7 type of mechanism for like ARP resolution, IP. We have a plugin for. Uh, we have a plugin on Astra. Uh, what are the plugins we have on Astra for? doing the data plane or, or the flows that you just mentioned it? Uh, we, we, like I said, we don't program the flows. We, the features that we do provide right now currently are L3 routers, uh, load balancing as a service, VPN as a service. And then we have a framework. If you come to a talk tomorrow, there's a way to provide sort of an NFV type of per, a tenant provisioned NFV type environment. Bring your own networking elements. OK, thank you. So, Yes. Well, once the API, like I said, once some of these API, are we going to support firewall as a service? Yes. When the APIs have matured, that's why we support uh, load balance as a service V2. We don't support V1. So um, now, and now that VPN as a service matured in, this, in the talk release, we supported that particular feature. So um, right now, Log into your systems. We'll just take a quick uh, viewpoint of what is in your deployment. Um, there's a jump host that everyone's actually going to be accessing SSH into. Um, there's one OpenStack controller that is currently running Keystone, Glance, Horizon, Nova, and Neutron. So this is a Neutron reference architecture. We have three NICs in use, uh, the management NIC, the tunnel NIC, and the external connectivity. And then we have a compute node that is configured the same way, right? Management, tunnel, and external. So, and this is kind of one of the, also the different changes. Uh, if you look at some of the reference architecture, the, new, the network node is the one that only has external connectivity. In our case, all your compute nodes have that external connectivity, 
right? So, like I said, we'll take a quick five minutes to let everyone access the system. So, we'll jump you SSH to the jump host. The cheats are missing a one particular field. You have to do a minus P to tell what port to get to port 22. Uh, a star is the username. Everyone's going to go to the same IP address, and then we're going to re port redirect port 80 and 6080 if you eventually when we want to get, jump onto the the nested VMs nodes uh, console page as well as the horizon that's available. So, which that does with the minus L will enable port forward into the horizon UI, enable port forward into the VNC proxy, and the password is Austin Summit to get into that first level. <clears throat> and then on your sheet after that, we'll SSH to the, to the controller, so root at the IP address that's on your sheet. And password is going to be Astara for, to, to get into that particular control node. So raise your hand if you're having problems accessing the system, and, they'll, and the helpers will work getting you there. So, so I'll show you logging into the system. Yep. Uh, Mark, <laughs> uh, our, our CTO is here. Um, I'm not familiar with that particular problem. The the question was, that will he able, will this solve the SRI I, SRIOV problem with security profiles and security groups? Right, because with sec if you use SROV today, you bypass security groups, and now that we're moving this outside of the compute node. Right. From Mark's familiar, more familiar with this, and he says it's not, it, it doesn't change the model on that. It, we don't solve that problem, so. Any other questions while people are accessing the documents and the website? Which one? The top one? Should work. Well, if you go to the GitHub, you can probably just go to the file directory and pull it down. So. So if you just go to the tutorial, go to the files, and then you can pull that down. The, that, the file's located in the same tree, so. Everyone got this information? Can I move it to the next, to the slides where we're at? So now I'll go to and show you how, what we're going to do for logging in. Don't have SSH. <laughs> Putty should work in the same way. So if you can do a port in Putty, you can do a port forwarding. Okay. So, so SSH to port 443. I'm not going to do the port forwarding on this particular model. So Austin Summit will get you to the controller node. And then from there, again, SSH as root. Dot 200, and then the last octet will be whatever is on your sheet. So, in my case, it's 188. And then Astara is the password to get into that system. And then you can see if you do it if config, 
we have three interfaces in the environment. Forget my commands. Um, so the next, what the next thing we're going to do? Go back to the slide deck because we're going to verify that we actually have a working OpenStack environment. So the one thing we want to do is, has everyone got into their controller? Okay, we're have no issues. Um, the first thing we want to do is actually uh, is source the slash root slash admin RC, because we're going to actually validate that all the services are running before we actually run some of these commands. So. So I'll show you what we're going to do next. So you do source slash root. So the first thing we're going to do is Nova service list. Make sure that we have running a run, at least one running compute and all the Nova services running. These are all nested environments, so they're kind of a little slower. So the other, next thing we're going to do is Neutron agent list. Make sure that we have all the agents that are running. You can see that this is a working. There's a second compute node that's down. It doesn't matter at this point. We can see that we have a Linux bridge, DHCP agent, Linux metadata agents are all running. So the first thing we're going to do, if you look in the slides, we're going to create just a, we can do a, just a net list to see that we currently have a blank system. So the thing, was that? Yeah. So we're just validating that we actually have a working OpenStack environment, right? So this, this is the reference architecture, right? So we have the, instead of having an additional node that's for the network part, we're having it on the controller. So, so what we're going to first do is just net create a demo net. Like I said, we just want to validate that we actually have a working environment. Right, so that created the network. We can actually now do subnet create. Created the subnet. Say that again? Well, yeah, if you look at the readme file for that's the tutorial. So this is a, these are just the, a distillation of the slide deck. So what we're going to do is, like, is, is verify our OpenStack deployment. So next we're going to create a router. I'm just going to quickly do just this first slide, and then we'll do this in steps. Just I want to show you what we're kind of doing. Right, creates a router. So we actually have a working Neutron environment. So and then we'll just boot up a quick Saros image image. So we have to have the net ID so we know what to attach to that network interface port. So this these are just the typical neutron commands that you go when. So 
So, like, if. Yeah. Yeah, we, I just want, we just want to validate that this is an actual working environment. There's no smoke and mirrors, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is how uh, things work. You see that you have all these, if you go back, you can see that you have tons of these agents, right? <clears throat> and this is showing like a working environment, how, how easy it is actually to convert over to using Neutron with Astara, so. And then from there, like I said, everyone just validate their, your environment working because the next couple steps as we start configuring a star for Neutron, uh, if you don't have the daemons running, it will just cause problems. So take a few seconds. Any other quick questions? Anything I can help with? So switch over to the slide deck. Let them see what's on, what we're doing in terms of ver ver verifying the environment. So. Yeah, we're just booting, we're just, like I said, I just want to validate the environment. So if you look at the next step, we're just going to clean it up, right? So and, and like I said, for the next step, we just remove what we just created. And then we actually stop and disable all of the different agents in your environment, right? So we create an override file. So you, on reboots, that particular agent won't start up. And then we actually stop it completely from running. And then the next step, we actually remove those agents from the Neutron database. So they're not running. Neutron is unaware of those particular things. So I'll give you a few more minutes to verify the environment, then we'll start to the next, go through the next slide deck. Everyone, anyone else having problems? If you just do a Nova list, do you see a VM instance? When you did the Nova boot command, you got a success, correct? No? OK. Um, should be the demo user, and I think demo, uh, demo user is the password. If you look in that, the credential file, the user RC credential file. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. We, we have, the, typically this environment is with two compute nodes, but since we're resource limited, we only had one compute node for each environment. The password is secret with an E, so. <laughs> so once we have the environment, I'll quickly go over this, and then you guys can follow along after. So we're going to clean up our existing resources and then remove those resources from the uh, what we stopped in the environment. So we'll go back to the our controller. So we're going to stop the running VM. Yes? What the what was the pro the issue? Okay, um, if you do a neutron age, agent list, 
Do you see all your agents running? So if you can just log into the, com the compute node and then either restart the, the agent that is down, the, most likely it's the Linux bridge agent that's down. So the IP address for the compute node is 10.01.4. So what was that? Yes, sorry, that's the other thing is you have to be admin. Yeah, so like I said, log into the compute node. You can either reboot it or you can start, start the Linux bridge agent, so. So we'll delete the interface from the router that we attached it to. So we'll delete the network. And then we'll delete the router. Once we have all the neutron resources deleted, we're going to actually stop. And uh, the, the service agents, the L3, the metadata, and DHCP. And then we'll do the neutron agent lists. And we'll remove those agents from the database. So the L3 agent, we need to know the UUID. This is going to. You have to do this by the UUID for the particular agent that you want to delete. Correct, from the da Neutron database. So like I said, they're not used in the environment, so. Say that again? Just the Linux bridge agent is all we, like I said, that's the only agent that we acquire in our environment is the L2 agent, so. Just, just a sec, let me finish this up and then I'll answer your question. All the advanced service agents, L3, metadata, DHCP. Quick question? 10.0.1.4. So if we go back and do the agent list, you'll see that we're only running the L3 agents in the environment, right? You notice that the controller actually has an L2 agent on it? Because one of the features of the orchestrator to actually do managing the, the a service appliance, we, do, we connect in an IPv6 address NIC to the service appliance, and the controller has a service that manages that particular element. So, so you notice that the compute nodes and the controller have the L2 agent. So wherever the orchestrators run in your environment will have an L2 agent as part of it. So any other questions? Any help? Yes, I'll come down. Can you switch slide? Yeah. No agent join.
Any other quick questions on what we've done so far? Like I said, we're just tearing down the environment, of removing the things that, that, like I said, we're simplifying Neutron at this point. So. I'll just give you a few more minutes. Questions? Yes. So we're going to continue on with uh, bringing, uh, bringing down Neutron. So we're going to now do the Neutron configuration with the Astara. So this is where we actually start modifying Neutron to actually interact with Astara. So we're going to go and edit Etsy Neutron, Neutron.conf. We're going to change the plugin the core plugin that's going to be used. We're going to actually use the Python library that we provide for doing ML2. And then we're going to change the service plugin to tell it what type of resources that we're actually going to be providing. So this is going to be the service dash plugin, the star underscore neutron namespace, and then the, where that particular library is located at. And then all the additional API extensions that we provide will tell where the API extension path is located at. And then we tell Neutron to emit notification notices on the bus. So 
we have a notification driver. We tell it to emit um, those not RPC no notifications. And then we're going to edit the ML2 underscore conf.ini file and enable port security. Right? So we can actually, as an extension driver. So going to your system, I'll quickly show what, what the edits are. So VI. So the core plugin, we're going to change. Well, we, we have a lightweight ML2, we, but we underlining, we still use whatever method that's there, so. So we tell it the L3 as a service plugin. We tell where the API extensions are located. We'll actually add that into the default section. And then we'll add a notification driver as well. So this would tell Neutron how to interact with Astara. And then we'll go to the ML2 config. And we see the extension driver for port security, so it's there already. And then, depending on the type of ML2 driver, you can have the Linux bridge or OVS. We work with both. And when you're doing tunneling, we want to enable L2 pop in the environment. So the one thing is we want to verify the Linux bridge. Yep. So. We use Keystone, like I said, we're an open stack, we're a cross project. We do the, all that interaction, so. In this case, the agent information is actually in the ML2, it doesn't have a separate file. So L2 prop is enabled, so that's all we need to know, right? So that's the Neutron configuration that we have to do. Then we actually have a Nova configuration to tell Nova actually how to plug things in by the Neutron resources. So one of the things that we'll be adding, so take a few seconds, sorry, a minute or so, just do those quick edits. Switch over to the slides. <clears throat> Show the L2 pop is enabled in there. Then we actually do some Nova configurations. We tell it to use IPv6. This is going to be the management. It's kind of pointless to use IPv4 for the management port because as you start multi tenancies, you're looking at thousands of tenants, right? So you're going to have all these IPv4s, you're going to restrict yourself. So it might as well use IPv6. Was that? But you could use V4, but I, we wouldn't recommend it. So, um, and then you want to enable service proxy. If you're using metadata service, you tell it Nova to, to use the service metadata proxy, right? And then the one thing that does change is the policy JSON, right? Currently, the network attached for Nova is, can only be done by the admin API. We're telling it that the role of services can actually plug into an external interface to the external network. So that's what this role leak service that we add to that particular policy JSON. Right? Otherwise, it's going to say I can't connect. It, the, Nova says I can't connect to an external network. So that's what that allows when the service VM gets spun up by this, 
by the admin service, it can actually connect to the external networks. So, and then at that point, we just restart the Nova API, Nova server, and the Linux bridge agent. So. Uh, we actually, yeah, there's some things we'll have to do, right? Then we'll actually create some networks in Nova. We just wanted to make sure that get Nova connected. We'll define a, a star net management network, and we'll create an external network that we'll be attaching things to. And then we'll, we'll download the source. That's the next step is installing it. So we'll actually go and install through pip, right? So it's, like I said, this is, we're probably halfway done right now at this point, once we restart the service, so. I'll just go through the tutorial quickly so people will understand what we're doing and then we'll go through the commands. So we restart the service, we create the, the management network, which is an IPv6 network. We create an external network that we're going to be attaching all the uh, service appliances to. You can see it's a 172 address that's going to be local in that system. Then we actually clone the Git repository for a Stara, Star Neutron, a Star Horizon, Star Appliance. Those are already located in your root directory. So we'll create a Star user and the required service directories. So user add, make directory change the ownership for those directories to Astara. Then we go to the code base, so slash root to Astara, do a pip install dot, that'll install the, the software for Astara and Astara Neutron. And then we'll actually configure Astara to actually connect to all the different um, projects. So we tell, it to, we tell Astara to actually connect to the Oslo messaging bus so we tell it where the rabbit host is located, where the rabbit user ID password, the deep database connection, the Keystone authentication, right? And then we actually tell in that configuration file the management network that it's going to be connecting to. So when an orchestrator spins up, it knows actually what management network to assign to its namespace for the management where the management subnet is going to be located, define the external network that we're going to be attaching the VM to, and then we tell it what type of interface driver to utilize. So if we're using, in this environment, we're using Linux Bridge, and the, or we can actually use OBS. And this is the point of configuration, so. Yes. The controller is on that will talk to the service VM management port. So, so the, and then from there, the orchestrator will tell it where the provider rules for providing the services. If you're, if you're doing metadata, you tell it how to talk to the Nova metadata. What's the shared secret between the two systems? And then we'll install the appliance, the service VM. It's already been built. For you guys, so there's a QCal image already been built. Otherwise, that would take like a half hour to build from source. Uh, yeah, uh, the the flavor. <laughs> we actually create a specific flavor for the service appliance. So the service appliance, you give it an ID, right? So we have the service appliance. You upload the service appliance in Glance, right? The image load, create. That we create a specific flavor for a star to spin up these service VMs. So RAM 512, disk size of three gigabytes, number of VC, VC, CPU. Do you have them um, actually change the config file, restarting the Nova server, and it will not restart the install the Anaconda to the pip install the Anaconda stuff. Oh. So they haven't restarted the system. Do you have them restarting from? Okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, one of the key things about the service appliance, uh, I'll, I'll address that in a sec. Um, the service appliance actually will install, does, does, does config drive, so we'll actually configure the interfaces and it will actually upload a service key to the system. 
So uh, this SSH key will allow you to SSH directly without password for the t system for that if you have that session key uh, that we created. <laughs> Not in the admin project. If you do a Nova list dash dash all tenants, it will show up there. It's actually under the service tenant. Yeah, so if you can log into the service tenant, you'll actually see it in that environment. You tell it in the config file for the orchestrator, you tell actually what UUID that you want to spin up as a star appliance. So since the image upload, the UUID that we uploaded that particular image for, we tell it where what image to spin up whenever you get a router call, right? This is the router section. You'll notice that there's different sections for load balancer, and there's a section for, if you want to enable VPN, there's a flag that you throw on the router. And then what flavor you want to spin up that particular VM. Um, Just the service provider, so. And then we actually create, have a, a specific database, right? You create a, a database, and we populate the tables, give it access. And then we create a service for Astara, because we actually, when you start doing the, v, the high availability clustering, or if it's talking Horizon needs to talk to the service, it knows actually where to talk to. So we, we create a service as well as their appropriate endpoints for admin, internal, and public. <clears throat> then we create the upstart script for starting it, log rotate, the pseudo files, and then we start the star process. And that's pretty much it. And at this point, you can just now start utilizing it. Uh, is this part of the Yep. Kilo, uh, technically, Kilo. Liberty is, it's been out for over six months. Mataki has uh, the VPN as a service feature. It has the clustering feature, the, the VRRP. So there's, Mataka has some good features in this. So, and then under the hood, when you do a Nova list dash dash all tenants, you can see actually see the service VM. Um, and if you have that key, you can actually SSH a star to the IPv6 address and you actually get straight into the appliance. You can take, play around with the appliance. We do actually have a command line. So if you do an star CTL SSH in the router ID, it'll take you to that particular router. Um, there's a command line for rebuilding this, the images. So if you actually, then this is one of the, I'm sorry to, to go so quickly, but like I said, we'll go back and we'll help you out in, in the whole lab. I'll go out and it'll make it a little easier for you guys. One of the interesting features, if, if there's a new service VM that you want to implement, you can upload in a glance and do a gradual rollout. So any new, change the orchestrator file, so any new routers that get spun up will use that new image. And then you can actually use the star CTL command to rebuild particular routers. So you do a, a star dash CTL resource rebuild and then you give it the new UUID, the router ID, and it will rebuild that router instance that service instance with that new glance image. So and this is where you can see some of the op more straightforward operational aspects. So that's under the hood. I'll quickly go through the, the deck, like I said, for here. For the Nova instance, so go to Etsy Nova. So we'll add use IPv6 is true. You see that the service meta, uh, neutron metadata proxy is set to true. So the only thing we needed to add was the IPv6.
And this is, like I said, this is the important thing is the policy JSON. Where you see the network attach external networks, rule admin is API only at this point. Replace that with role services. And the Neutron ones we mentioned, those won't restart because we defined in the file to use the namespace for Astara for those extended services. So we'll not start those particular services. We'll kind of skip this section. I'm sorry about that. We'll actually do, do the pip install. Right? Generally, you would download the software. Like I said, git clone. We actually do have packages available. There's a package repository. If you look on the, we have one for Mataka. It's a PPA. Um, there's the fuel plugin that we have developed. That's under testing. We have a Juju as well. And we're working on a, a Ansible, OpenStack Ansible deployment as well. So, <clears throat> so we quickly. Add the user. You see that we actually have the, the Git repository already downloaded on that. Now we can just do pip install. Now actually we have the namespace of the pip library, we can actually restart the Neutron services. So we can go back. So taking that those configure trace those configuration ch changes that we did to Neutron, now we can actually create the star management network. Create the public network. So if we do now a neutron net dash list, you'll see that we actually have two networks defined. You see that they have IPv6, right? We have a public network. We have a, a star management network. Yes. This, this, this is the admin defined network. So you do this as admin, right? Because yeah. Correct. The, the, or, the orchestrator and the service appliance. The orchestrator runs on Yes. 
So wherever the, the, orchest the Astara orchestrator is located, that's why the L2 plugin, wherever the Neutron, sorry, wherever the Astara orchestrator is running, or the clusters, there's an L2 agent that's attached, that's running in the background as well. Because it's going to be plugging in the management port to talk to the management network. Oh, the neutron over the tunnel network. It could be v, VLAN tagging. It could be VXLAN. It could be VXLAN or GRE as such, right? Correct. It, it, but it does it not. It, the one thing it does not need is ex, uh, connectivity to the external network. So the, the, the compute nodes will need connections to the external network, but the controller will not. Right. Correct. Right. It just has the overlay network and the management, and that's it. It doesn't need external anymore. So, so like you said, we're simplifying it, right? So, and these are the UUIDs that you would need when you actually configure the a star registrator file. So, All right, so when you go into the orchestrator, Yep, uh, I missed one, one step where you actually have to configure, copy over the orchestrator, the Etsy directory. So I'll modify that and then this. So you see where there's a public key. These are all the default defined variables. So the, you'll see in the management network ID that will configure external network ID, subnet, the management prefix, external prefix. So with the values that we had earlier, So here's the management UUID. The external network ID which is the public network that we defined. The subnet ID. Um, yeah, that's the, the default one. He, if you look at it, what it, we defined in that, it, that's the default one we use in all our configuration, so. Okay. 
right? So we have those, those prefixes. We tell it where the rabbit to talk to. So if we go to the Oslo messaging, We can just put, cut and paste what we have there. Since we go to the database connection in the database section. And we can go to the Keystone authentication part. Verify that there's nothing defined. These all should be default values. Right. We tell it what interface driver to use. This will be in the default section. Right? Tell it what interface driver to use. And then we can create a SSH key. We can upload the appliance image in the system. And so, like I said, once we have the, know the UUID of that image, right? We get edit the orchestrator file. We go to the router section. The image UUID, we tell it what it is. We define the instant flavor that was created. We can start. We now we create the star database. We give it access. 
for the star user. Then we use a star db sync using the config file that we're going to use for the system, and we're going to create the tables in the star database. We'll create the star service in Keystone. What was that? It worked on my, uh, okay, that's weird. Gonna fail. Well, technically, we don't need it in this lab, particular, um, because since we're actually not using Horizon, Horizon is not going to need to know where the endpoints end or the service catalog is located. <clears throat> but generally, like I said, once you start doing the clustering, you'll need these the, the service catalog. You also need the service endpoints. So, yep. So, when you have multiple tenants and you have multiple clients, and you have multiple clients that you're about, yep. how does different clients learn about one another? Like, say I want to go from tenant A to tenant B, so I got to go out and It's going to go up to the gateway to the gateway on that external network and come back down. So. But this table is north south. Yep. So this appliance is going to have an external network on it. Yep. And then this appliance will have an external network on it. So it's going to follow the external network. I got it. Right. So, um, like I said, when the router advertisement, we can, like I said, the bird is actually running in the service VM. So we can actually do some BGP type stuff. and. Okay. That, that that will be on the roadmap. So. Yep. But generally, going external, you want to go out, so you have to have a default route. So. Should be there. Oops.
now that we have the upstart file, got other the configuration files for starting. So we have the orchestrator started up with that changes the configuration file. And from there, Okay, now we can create neutron elements. So we'll do this as admin user. Or it could be the demo user, it doesn't really matter. Right? Create the private subnet for that. So in some sense, it's, we're not doing anything different. Create the router. We'll add the interface for that private network to the router. We'll set the router interface to the external network. Then we can boot a for that private network that we Can create a floating IP. And we can associate that floating IP to that. You notice that we actually have the VRP, you have the rug service that a star created. This is the
you associate this floating IP to that port. So if we do a Nova list tenant, you can see that there's two VMs that actually spun up. You have the demo VM, and then you see the AK dash router. That's the router instance as it was created. So if we want to actually SSH to Azastara to the management IP address, which is the IPv6. Using the the key that we created, because that got injected into the appliance when it booted up. Looks like it's not injecting the key. Ah. This is one of the interesting features. Like I talked about how we do health checks. If we do a Nova list, dash dash, all tenants. We can take this UUID, we can say Nova delete. Eventually, the health check from the orchestrator will see that there's no VM instance in that particular case, and we'll restart the Astara router for you guys. And you noticed, like, after a few checks, that router has been recreated in the environment, right? So we have these health checks to, to see that, hey, that resource is not available, that service VM is not there. We need to start something up. So, so that's generally showing under the hood how things work, where that service VM is 
located, how you can actually SSH into it, right? So if I needed to rebuild the system or routers for a particular tenant, it's really easy to kill it and it will restart it actually with a new image. Or if you wanted to do a live migration, you can live migrate people off and in pairs. So any other questions? Do you guys need help? <clears throat> so, we can show you actually, if you're interested in how to contribute, you can get the source code where it's located at, the project status, documentation, where we have a weekly RIC meeting, so for the group. We're all located on the IRC channel. So if you want to talk to us, OpenStack to Astara. Like I said, we actually have um, working on different integration points. We do actually have a PPA. So we're, it's a fuel plug-in. We have a oil. And, we're, and I'm working on doing the Ansible aspect. We do work with Arista and Cumulus partners in the environment. If you really want to get into, we actually have a very interesting fishbowl session tomorrow at 9 a.m. It's extending the Neutron Advanced Services. Um, this is where a tenant can actually bring in their own network function service VM and not necessarily have to worry about the admin of the cloud network to provide these additional services. So there's a framework that we've developed and are developing in Mataka and Newton to actually to extend those event, Neutron services for the tenant. Um, Mark McLean, our CTO, will be doing a deep dive on Project Astara. That's tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then we have a meetup on Fridays. So. I'll be around for a bit since this is the very end of the day. So if you want to continue on, need help, we're here for you. So I'll start here.